this, it, well, you know, from the chemical point of view, this is a linear network. It's very complicated network, but it's not a very Okay, so, so, mm, okay, how much time do I have? Am I promised that? Ten minutes? Okay, so, so let me, let me just basically sketch out the, the general idea. Uh, I would like to build something which is nothing else but the multinomial distribution. I would like to basically build uh, something which is also similar to, to, to what uh, uh, Art Owen was calling non-parametric likelihood. But basically, the idea is very simple, and the only clever thing in, in what, what, what remains is the parameterization. Okay? I would use certain parameterization that would allow me to write out these multinomials in a relatively small number of parameters. Which is good because as you can see, these networks are huge in general. They will potentially have a very, very large number of species and a large number of interactions. So what is the idea? Let's say that I have D chemical species, okay? And I have N possible reaction methods in some good space. The RD, calligraphic RD, is a collection of MHSD cones which are spanned by these reactions. What do I mean by this? Now, one of the features of that picture that I showed you on the previous slide was that it was very hierarchical. I had partial order. What it means is that it happened, especially at the top of this graph, that there potentially was just one single biochemical species that was giving rise to a whole bunch of other species. This is called the conic network in these chemical models. Because basically, if you write out the reaction vectors, they represent a cone in the appropriate, in the appropriate space, right? Because they basically have the same sort. Now, it's not difficult to see that I can decompose this entire biochemical network of mine into a disjoint sum of these cones. Because I can just look at this network one source at a time. So basically, my entire network decomposes into these network reaction cones. So in what follows now, I will just look at the single reaction cone, and I will describe the method for the single reaction cone, understanding that then I have to basically combine these things together to get my uh, final result. All right, so I have a bunch of these reactions. I have a collection of positive cones which are spun by the subset. So that's another thing that I'm making an assumption. I'm basically making an assumption that if I have D species, then the parsimonious model would be the one that has the smallest number of parameters and allows me to explain the data that I obtain out of these D species. So then I will be making an assumption that I will attempt to identify the smallest possible number of reactions that will be D in this case, that will allow me to explain the data. So in other words, I am interested in subcones, d-dimensional subcones, and n-dimensional And then the question is, which ones of these subcones have perhaps higher probability of being the subcones representing or generating the data, uh, given the information from them? So you, when you say you want to minimize the number of cones, I don't want to minimize anything yet. I, I don't tell you know that. That. No, I am interested in minor. identifying, I, I, put, I am interested in putting some kind of probability measure on this collection, R choose D, when this is basically a collection of all the dimensional cones. So I will try to identify the cones that seem to be the most likely cones, given the data that I have, to be responsible for the reactions that I have observed. Okay, and I will put some kind of probability on those cones. In fact, I will do that by this multinomial model, but I will reparameterize. So I will not have to do it cone by cone because then I will be in a very, very deep trouble. This is a super exponential problem. So you're the number of, of cones, but not the volume of the one cone. The not cone. necessarily the volume. That's right. The, the, the volume, the, 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 well, okay. Well, let's, let's move on. I will, I hopefully it will become clear. All right, so basically what I'm doing, I have a cone, which is a positive cone generated by the reaction vectors in R. I have S, this is important. This is the partition of this total reaction cone that I have generated by R. So this is this partition, S1, S2. So these are the 
these are all possible intersections of the non-degenerate cone and this RD collision. These SIs are in combinatorial mathematics referred as chambers. Okay, so these are the chambers of the partition. This is really a partition of my, of, of, of my cone of reaction. And then I will define this theta, which is a probability uh, measure. It's, it's a point in the probability simplex. Uh, so it's basically a probability measure on this vector. Okay, and we are looking. Okay, so 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 a little bit of uh, uh, of algebra here, right? And then the, what happens? I am using a trick that is a well-known trick in, for instance, the community of people who work on the phylogenetics, on the people who analyze phylogenetic trees and. Some people, for instance, who are working on, uh, on alignment problems, the hidden Markov model. This is called an algebraic mapping. Okay? You can build up these sort of polynomial equations uh, and then build a, a corresponding likelihood based on the idea of a polynomial map. So a polynomial map, in my case, is basically a polynomial that multiplies together these individual probabilities of, of a particular reaction, but I'm only looking at the, at the d-dimensional cones, so I have a product of d of these, and then sigma represents every possible permutation throughout this entire cone of reaction. Okay. So this is nothing else, this is called an elementary symmetric polynomial. And then here I will have the coefficient, which is basically the volume. So again, volume could mean different things for different people. Here I am just using the, 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 the Lebesgue measure. I'm just using the, the, the standard volume of this cone. But in many circumstances, it would be beneficial to use a different measure. It depends how is it that you're collecting your data. What, so, so, so the coefficient here would largely depend on the experimental plan, on the experimental model that you have assumed for your data collection. And for instance, in some cases that we have looked at, we have looked at these measures which were driven by exponential distribution. In other words, you know, you would look at something which is absolutely continuous with respect to the Lebesgue measure, but it has gamma or exponential distribution. And the reason was that we put some level of uncertainty on the coefficients that, that we're, that, that on the structures of the equation, in particular on the coefficients. Take that So the point is that I have the ability to basically create this polynomial model, which is now uh, a way for me to write out the probabilities for each one of the chain. Okay, so this now this is it. So what do I do? The single polynomial is this elementary polynomial, and then I normalize it by basically taking the sum of all of those uh, possible cones. So this is S. So now I will have this rational function, which is representing the probability of a particular reaction. I'm sorry, here not. It, it represents the, the, the probability of the, of, of, of the particular chain. Okay. But it's parameterized now by theta, which is corresponding to the, to the probabilities of particular reaction. So I have a potentially very large object here, which is parameterized by just a number of reactions. So that's the part when, when I think uh, that kind of structure is useful because basically I have just written uh, potentially a very complicated function, but uh, it has relatively few ground. Okay, so this is a picture. So this is my conic network. It has five species. So let's say I have the reaction the first one was A1 goes to 2A1, A1 goes to A1 plus A2, A1 goes to A3, A1 goes to 2A2, and so, and so forth. Basically, the, the, the point here is that I still have the same source. And if I have the same source, I, from here I see that I am looking at the total number of five chains. So what happens, I took uh, this one, this one, and this one, so I take triple. Right in this in this in this case, I have uh, 